morning everyone, I'm Marian Jade Honorario and we will discuss the monitoring of WHS procedures and practices in the workplace. The health and safety management system should include First is the identification and analysis of health and safety hazards in the workplace. It is important to evaluate all the equipment that we use, especially in restaurants or in any place where the machine and equipment are usually used for food. If these practices cannot be done, then it is not possible to cause food contamination or food poison. It is not just for the people who eat but also for those workers who use the equipment or machine in that particular workplace. Second is control measures to eliminate or reduce the risk to workers from hazards. Every establishment have a personal protective equipment. We all know what is the use of it. It is for us or the workers to be safe. Like for example, in the construction site, if they didn't wear the personal protective equipment, they may get injured. Third is clearly demonstrate management commitment and written organizational policy. We must follow all the policy written or posted in each designated places. This is not just posted as the sign. It is for us to know what is prohibited to avoid accidents. Fourth is worker competency and training. We are all aware that before we start our job, we started as a trainee. It is to enhance our skills and knowledge regarding to our assigned job. Because if we are not trained and has lack of knowledge on what to do, it is not possible to get injured. Fifth is inspection program. It is important that we should maintain the monitoring of the place where we work. To know if there are still unidentified hazards to avoid accidents and inconvenience. Six is emergency response planning. As all you notice, in every establishment, there are evacuation or emergency plans posted on the wall. Where you can see the map on where you should go if there are some unexpected accidents such as earthquake and fire. Seven is incident reporting and investigation. It is important to investigate if there are accidents happen in particular workplace. If these practices cannot be done, there will be more workers and customers that can be injured. For example, if there is an earthquake, it is better to ensure if the workplace is safe like buildings. Because anytime it may collapse and birds can get killed the people inside the building. Last is management system organization. Program administration ensures that all parts of health and safety management system are properly looked after and communicated to workers. Good day everyone, I am Angelica Rose Costillas and now I will discuss the health and safety procedure and work practices that should be monitored. First is hazard identification. What is hazard identification? It is a part of process used to evaluate if any particular situation, item, things may have potential to cause harm. It is also a way to identify what are the problems or harm we can get in a workplace. Overall, the goal of hazard identification is to find and record possible hazard that may cause harm in a workplace. When should hazard identification be done? First, it can be done during design and implementation. Second, before tasks are done. Third, while tasks are being done. Fourth, during inspections. And last, after incidents. Second, in risk assessment and control. In this part, you will decide who may be harmed and how. Evaluate the risk and decide on precautions. And how to eliminate the hazard or control the risk when the hazard cannot be eliminated. What is the purpose of a risk assessment? It is a systematic examination of a task job or process that you carry out of work for the purpose of identifying the significant hazards, the risk of someone being harmed, and deciding what further control measures you must take to reduce the risk to an acceptable level. Third is emergency, fire, and accident control. In this part, you need to take an action. But before you take an action, 
you need to review first the risk assessment and control that you have so that it's easy for you to solve the problem. That's why we need to plan first before taking on an action. For this incident and accident reporting, first, note every details and problem. Make sure you will take note everything that happened. So you have a copy, what's the problem happened again. You can also record certain cases of work-related injuries, illness, or incident to the health. The report must include the date of the recording, their personal details, the details of the company, the location, date, and time of the incident, and last, a description of the injury, illness, or incident. Fifth is consultation. Consultation involves sharing relevant information, giving workers a reasonable opportunity to express their views, raise issues, and contribute to decision-making. Why is consultation is so important in the workplace? Consultation is a legal requirement and essential part of managing health and safety risks. A safe workplace is more easily achieved when everyone involved in the work communicates with each other. To identify hazards and risks, talks about any health and safety concerns and work together to find solutions. And six is secure handling of document, equipment, cash, people, and key controls. Like what I've said earlier, you need to make sure that everything happened is recorded and secured. So that if it happened again, you have a copy of the solution to that problem. Good day everyone. My name is Donna and I will discuss monitoring health and safety action plan. Health and safety action plans should be reviewed regularly to monitor performance and progress against plans, objectives, target, and performance. This generally done through discussion and review at management and HSC meeting. When monitoring health and safety, it might become apparent that an action plan has failed meet objectives in line with continuous improvement practices. The plan will need to be based and origin, original objectives and strategies, redefined to improve their success. When monitoring health and safety, it might become apparent that an action plan has failed meet its objectives in line with continuous improvement practices. The plan will need to be raised and original objectives and strategies redefined to improve their success. Alternately, the action plan may need to be abandoned and a new plan developed rather than wasting resources on the plan that is not working. Action plan should also be amended when incident or risk assessment identify hazard requiring action that are not immediately dealt with. Observation, conclusion, amendments, and recommendation should be documented for an ongoing action as quarterly annual reporting on the implementary of action plan might be required by the plan of PCRC or the HS. Adult of health and safety action plan might also be initiated by the plan of PCBU, HSC or regulatory bodies. Audits generally check for currency of action plans and monitoring and reporting on action plans and their outcome. Good day everyone! I'm Mabel and Basal and I will discuss about When monitoring health and safety action plans, consideration should be given to First is any concerns of relevant stakeholders and interested parties. Second is legislative changes. Third is changes to products, services, processes, or procedure of the business. In our fast-paced world, ongoing social, economic, and political developments are driving legislative changes that impact workforce, 
management. As a result, global companies may be subject to new rules and regulations that address a wide range of issues which have come around due to social changes in society, to political movements, to economic issues in some regions. Adjusting to these legal frameworks, however, may be easier said than for companies with operations in multiple countries, yet failing to comply can have far-reaching consequences. It should be clear that each of these developments has a significant impact on companies with operations in the relevant regions. It is highly likely that in the near future, a growing number of countries will issue new legislation regarding issues such as paid party, workplace, discrimination, data protection, worker classification, remote work, and more. Processes provide a likely solution in the broadest sense. They can be defined as collections of tasks and activities that together and only together transform inputs into outputs. Within organizations, these inputs and outputs can be varied as materials, informations, and people. Common examples of processes include new product development, order fulfillment, and customer service. Less obvious but equally legitimate candidates are resource allocation and decision making. The key to understanding what makes an organization more or less effective is how it does things. One must understand various processes, how goals are set, how the means to be used are determined, the forms of communications used among members, their processes of problem solving and decision making, how they run meetings and groups, how superiors and subordinates relate to each other, and ultimate how leaders lead. And lastly, the advances technology. Whenever technology is mentioned in the context of business, one usually assumes that the purpose is to enhance productivity and improve communication. However, technology for the purposes of health and safety is gaining more adherence due to the emphasis placed upon organizations to comply with laws and standards. Safety technology in the workplace has not only improved employees' health but has also made them happier and more productive. Technology gives workers the right tools for adequate data collection and faster reaction times. It can also have a significant impact in the reduction of injuries and deaths in workplace. Safety technology is an essential aspect in the workplace and companies that are using it experience better work, turnout, and more satisfied and healthier employees. Understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties is a new requirement. You should allow time to develop an understanding of your business, internal and external stakeholders' interests that might influence your business strategic directions. This information should be gathered, reviewed, and regularly monitored through formal channels such as management review. We suggest that you undertake analysis of interest parties to determine the relevant interested parties and the requirements that relate to your business activities and those which impact the management system. In order to determine the relevance of an interested party or its requirements, your organization needs to answer, does this interested party or the requirements affect our organization's ability to achieve the intended outcomes of its management system? Good day everyone! I'm Maureya Bianca Cuesterborn. This topic is all about PPE. First, what is PPE? PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment meaning the equipment which are used for the safety of individuals. PPE does not prevent the hazard, but it can save the lives of those who work in such conditions. It has six steps process to addressing barriers. For example, employees have not been wearing safety glasses while operating bench grinding. 
First, identify the problem. The problem is clearly stated, people are not wearing appropriate PPE. Like the example that I've said, employees have not wearing safety glasses, which required while operating the branch grinder. Second, determine the objective. The objective is just as clear. Employees must wear appropriate PPE. And for my example, one of the appropriate PPE is safety glasses to protect his eyes. Third, get the facts. First, employees must be aware that they should be wearing PPE. Second, employees must be provide correct PPE. Visual reminders to use PPE. And last, supervisor should policing the use of PPE. Fourth, weigh and decide. Make sure that all parties responsible are included in the decision-making process. Always analyze current training provided and use of PPE. Supervisor set an example and wear PPE and current signage glasses must be worn tight. Fifth, take action. Employees could provide extra training, supply PPE, put up safety glasses must be worn tight, and make sure the supervisor monitors the correct use of PPE. And last, Check the result. After a suitable period, revisit the issue to make sure your actions are successful. The university teaches us in so many ways. It improves our self-awareness to our surroundings, especially to the place where we usually go. Like evaluating the equipment and machines that we use to avoid accidents or injuries. It is very prominent to know the safety hazards not just in food, but most importantly to our surroundings. We cannot predict what could happen to us. Studying health and safety procedure is very really important. It reduces the employee's illness and injuries greatly. It is also a way to prevent injuries and hazards in all work environments. Welder hazard include challenges in ergonomics, workplace, mental capacity, and great well-being of employees. As a result, your business can be protected from the potential liabilities and costs associated with incidents that occur in workplace. Studying about PPE or personal protective equipment is very interesting and useful because we never know maybe someday we need it. Using PPE in the workplace has been proven to reduce injuries, accidents, and other occupational risks when used correctly. PPE is so important because it exists as a preventative measure for industries that are known to be more hazardous like manufacturing and mining. Diversity provides lessons which you can apply to your daily routine. For example, the WHS procedure that you can apply to your work. It teaches the safety procedure that needs to be practiced. Second is the PPE or Personal Protective Equipment which is used for protection to avoid injuries. And also the health and safety procedure for the employee to know the safety hazard and to be healthy. 